All right, welcome back to History and Coffee. And today I'm doing a sneaky. And uh, every once in a while I make a, a video that's sort of off my, my normal topic in order to drive a little bit of traffic to the channel. And hopefully some of those people who come for the um, for those videos stay for the um, majestic and informative history lectures that I normally give. So if you're just dropping by the channel for this video, you should consider sticking around and maybe liking and subscribing. And you'll get to hear about awesome stuff like Wild Bill Hickok and um, the Mexican-American War and all the other cool content I already have on the channel. So, And if not, thanks for stopping by and um, you know, basically just sort of using me for my one video and not giving anything back. You're a horrible person and um, I don't know how you sleep at night. So anyway, today I'm going to talk about cap and ball revolvers for self-defense. And the, the first thing that comes to mind when you say that is why would you ever do that? Well, there are some people, uh, be it age or legal trouble or firearms restrictions that the only way that they can have a handgun is it's, it's a cap and ball. And people tend to immediately write these off as underpowered, um, inaccurate, unreliable. And there is some questions of reliability, but they are, um, in fact, very accurate. And they, even in the case of the 36 caliber here, it has the same muzzle energy as a 9mm. So, um, don't be so quick to write these things off. So I'm going to talk about ballistics and I'm going to talk about terminal ballistics and get into why if you have no other choice, these are viable to defend yourself with. So when it comes to ballistics, you have two numbers. You have your muzzle velocity and your muzzle energy. And then you have what's called terminal ballistics, which is how those numbers come together to stop a target, be that a, a person or an animal or, you know, somebody who is trying to threaten your life. Um, and ballistic numbers, they give us an idea of what the terminal ballistics might be, but they're not, they're not always the best indicator. The best, uh, case of that would be like, let's take, for instance, the 44 Magnum. Now, if you just look at the numbers, it has a very high muzzle velocity and a very high muzzle energy. But that energy, because it is so high and it's moving so fast, it will not dump that energy into the target. It'll probably dump it into the third or fourth wall behind that target. And that is not going to stop that target unless it's, say, something wide like a grizzly bear. <laughs> so, um, you want to make sure that you understand that too low is bad, but too high is also bad as well. Um, things like bullet weight, etc. And so that brings me to these cap and ball revolvers. Now you have two to choose from. There is three, like the 31 caliber, but that is extremely weak. I would not recommend that for anything but fun at the range. Um, you have the 36 caliber here, and then you have the bigger uh, 44 calibers. Now, most of the videos that I've, I've sort of browsed around and saw some other uh, self-defense cap and ball revolver videos, and most of them recommend the 44. And my issue with that is over penetration. I believe that the 44 caliber projectile in a cap and ball revolver is moving a little bit too fast and it's a little bit too heavy that you have that chance um, for over penetration. And that chance is enough that I wouldn't personally recommend that because uh, again legally speaking if you defend yourself with a firearm the second you let loose that bullet you're responsible for it if it goes through the person you're aiming at and hurts somebody else you're liable and again that issue of it is it going to dump its muzzle energy into the target or is it going to dump it into something behind it so um, personally I would recommend the 36 and I know that's going to be uh, controversial, but, um, you know, with a proper historical load, it has the same muzzle energy and the same muzzle energy as a nine millimeter, which is a proven defensive caliber. And because it's moving at the speed it's moving, it has more of a chance of 
dumping that energy into the target without overpenetrating. Um, and if we look at this historically speaking, the vast majority of people who carried these cap and ball revolvers, you know, in the old West and before for self-defense, they were carrying um, 36 caliber revolvers. The 44s were generally given to um, military and it was because they were worried about stopping charging horses and things like that, not individuals. So, you know, take that as you will. Um, now, if you want to, if you're looking at, you know, sort of getting a, a self-defense set up, first of all, learn how to make these paper cartridges. Um, and I've developed a little, I got some little weed baggies off Amazon here that I keep them in. So it's sort of like a modern inclination of these, um, how they would have been issued in the 19th century, which are these cartridge packs. Um, get yourself a capper and um, practice reloading, practice shooting. Um, as far as reliability goes, um, buying a, an off-the-shelf cap and ball revolver and expecting to use it for self-defense is not something that's that's going to happen. Unfortunately, these are usually pretty rough from the factory. And um, due to some discrepancies between percussion caps in the 19th century and percussion caps today, these stock nipples on a lot of these... Um, they cause cap jams. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you want to use one of these seriously is replace the nipples. And I would suggest getting to know your gun specifically and seeing what might break, what might fail. Um, maybe taking a file to some things and, you know, that should get you started. As far as, um, this is a huge one, is, is carrying these, you know, sort of concealed carry. Uh, for some reason, people believe that because they're not considered a firearm by the, um, by ba I think it's BAFT or whatever, whoever dictates those rules these days, um, that you can conceal carry this without a permit. And that's not true. While this is not considered a firearm, if you are carrying this loaded and capped on your person, it is considered a concealed deadly weapon and carries the exact same penalty. So... Carrying this is out. If you are, have the ability to carry a firearm, do not carry a cap and ball revolver. Um, and if you do not, you know, also don't. So, so um, again, um, the other thing too is barrel length. Um, and I know, you know, I'm all over the place with this, but I don't generally make myself notes. I just sort of ramble. Um, anyway, barrel length. There's a lot of little short. Um, models of these and people think oh that might be a little bit more handy the um a lot of the muzzle velocity and energy is dependent on barrel length and they were designed uh, by samuel colt with a 7.5 inch barrel for a reason the little shorty ones are not going to give you the numbers you want for self-defense um and generally they didn't really exist um in the period when these were you know first around um when you see those little chop short ones that was generally later and it was generally with cartridge conversions so that's something to think about um i would recommend sticking with the stock barrel lengths um, if you wanted to actually seriously um use these um the other thing too now is of course the round ball versus the conical um the conicals uh, are appealing because they're generally a little bit more accurate um i would say that's negligible though you can't really uh, I mean, maybe on paper, but um, they they weigh a little bit more. So um, that's going to give you a little bit higher number. But again, I believe with the conicals, you have that issue of, well, I call it like a, the, what happens with, um, with full metal jacket ammunition. If you fire that into a live target, it has the potential to over-penetrate. And it does this thing because of the shape of the projectile it will sort of slip and slide around things. And I know this is kind of horrible, but <laughs> it's um, it, it, this is ballistic science. The round balls tend to smash and crush versus um, just sort of passing through. And having seen the few ballistic gel tests that are out there, I would definitely take a, a round ball over a conical when it came to... Um, using this defensively. Now, there are some sort of boutique conicals out there that look a little bit like a wad cutter. And if you can get those, I'm sure that's that's going to be better. 
but um, I would honestly uh, just sort of off the shelf. I would stick with the round balls. Um, and yeah, so get yourself a, a percussion revolver. Get yourself a capper. Learn how to make cartridges. Um, you know, practice, practice, practice. And if that's all you got, don't feel too bad because they're uh, they're a lot better than people think. And uh, thanks for uh, dropping by the channel, and I hope you learned something.